Ladies and gentlemen, a good afternoon. We're happy to welcome you at the continuation of the Baltic Forum, Circular Economy. Now we're going to work in the session of sharing the experience of cyclic economy, the experience of finding solutions in Finland. And from general political questions, we come to the practical questions. We'll get acquainted with the best practices and solutions in Finland. Uh, our event is held in the online format at the Technological Center of Te uh, Len Polygraph Marsh. We are in the central studio at the boiling point, St. Petersburg. Our event is translated in two languages. You know the two sessions start in parallel, one session in the whole of Russia and the whole of Germany. Uh, we are uh, supported by the Agency of Strategic Initiative, uh, St. Petersburg Cluster of uh, Clean Technologies, uh, Skolkovo Center and the Russian German Chamber of Commerce. I'm happy that General Consulate of Finland and St. Petersburg as our partner, the Administration of St. Petersburg, Foreign Relations Committee, uh, the Nature Management Committee, the uh, Committee on uh, Policy and Trade were supported by Lachti, Kotka and Laperant Administration. I would like to know that the partner of our today's uh, hall, uh, the Hall of Finland, is Vatin Campos, Lapita Project, uh, Borderline Cup and we'll start our work. I suggest that we'll start our work. I'm happy that my co-moderator and main moderator of our session will be the consul of the General Consulate of Finland in St. Petersburg, uh, Mr. Janne Hirvan. And please, I give you the floor for moderating the session. Our session will be in the English language with translation into the Russian language. Please, thank you very much, Maxim. Uh, to address uh, our colleagues and our, our uh, audience on this topic, which is important. It is near and dear to us, not only here in, in uh, St. Petersburg, Northwest Russia, but all together in our bilateral cooperation with our partners, as well as on the multilateral level. Uh, as you are well aware, uh, we have quite ambitious uh, object, objects uh, for, for future development in this regard. Uh, by uh, 2035, we are aiming to be a, a carbon neutral uh, society. Uh, our products will be based on, on sustainable development as well as our services. Um, we aim for a uh, sustainable increase of, of the so-called sharing economy. Uh, our choices will be, uh, so will be future proof and the, the key strength in, in these will be the, the fairness of, uh, of the society. Um, we are aiming for this sort of uh, more for less uh, objective. So we are using uh, less natural, natural resources and using those resources wisely. Um, using breakthroughs, breakthroughs in, in, in technology, in, in science, to, uh, to, to uh, use those in, in, in our innovations and products. It can be digital solutions, smart re regulation, uh, responsible investing in, in, in these, these sources. Uh, also, with the circular economy model, we will be a, a global leader and a strong player uh, in, in the global arena, and also a provider for sustainable solutions in, in, in that context. Um, as the first speaker uh, of today, we have uh, uh, Mr. Markku Heinonen, um, who is the development director of the city of La Peranta. Um, we have close collaboration with a uh, with number of cities from, uh, from Finland. La Peranta is, is uh, I would say, a uh, really good example in, in this regard. Um, Markku has more than 30 years of uh, experience in municipal administration for making city strategies uh, and taking care of uh, cooperation with businesses, ministries and foreign relations, including relations with, with Russia. Henonin is also responsible for uh, the sustainable program uh, of the city of La Peranta. La Peranta is uh, also ambiously investigating, uh, investing in sustainable well-being of its citizens. Uh, also, the city of La Peranta is one of the first European cities to join the EU Green City Accord. Uh, the Green City Accord initiative encourages cities to promote environmental protection and to work towards more sustainable, cleaner and healthier cities. 
So with these short introductory words, Markku, the floor is yours. Uh, yes, uh, hello, good afternoon. It's an honor to be with you today and share some experiences and results in becoming a green city fit for life and uh, fit for future. My name is Markku Heinonen and I work at the mayor's office in the city of Lappeenranta. And as you may know, Lappeenranta is the border city in southeast Finland and our South Karelia region do have some 130,000 inhabitants only 200 kilometers away from St. Petersburg. Our brand, uh, uh, please can you, can you share my presentation? I think it's, you, you can see that, yeah. And the next slide, please. Our brand is uh, Lappeenranta La Green Reality, meaning we are green for real, we put impasses on results and actions. Mm -hmm. uh, and City of Lappeenranta has very ambitious goals. Lappeenranta will have clean air, clean water, uh, no waste, and we provide uh, just a sustainable well-being for our citizens uh, in the year 2050. And next slide, please. We are very uh, proud and pleased of the prestigious European Green Leaf Award uh, granted by EU Commission, and that was nominated to us together with the city of Kaprova. Uh, from Bulgaria. Uh, since uh, 1990, we have decreased our gashouse gas emissions by 46%. And the City Council has appro uh, approved uh, that Lapparanta will reduce uh, the greenhouse gases by 80% by 2030. By then, we would like to have 20% emissions compensated. So we aim to be carbon neutral city by 2030. So what we have done, all the mayor buildings in the city center are heated by biomass, which is a side stream from the forest industry. Uh, in 2017, Lapparanta was the first city in the world to switch entirely to eco energy certified carbon neutral electricity. Uh, city board decided that local government staff should use renewable energy vehicles only. This means that all the new cars will use biogas or electricity instead of fossil fuels. Please note that this is the rule for the city government, not all the citizens yet. We are one of the first cities in the world to take part in the new virtual power plant that combines the small electrical loads of buildings. And this virtual power plant self service helps balancing power consumption, decreases need for reserve power and cuts carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, in the material recycling rate is, uh, the earlier slide please, the material recycling rate is 53% and for energy production goes 45% of the waste. We are really proud that last year the amount of uh, this previous slide, slide not, not the next one, two slides back. We are really proud that last year the amount of municipal waste uh, landfill was zero. This means that 100% uh, of the waste of households will be separated and reduced. When we look all the processed waste, not only household waste, 4% of the waste is still unfortunately going to the landfill. Right now we are having time for a small celebration because the local waste management company has opened a total new biogas plant 
that produce this biogas for vehicles like waste collection, private cars or buses. This biogas is made uh, out of the sludge. And the bio waste separation started in 2002. Nowadays, separation of waste is made for eight different categories. The municipal waste company is owned by the city and other neighboring municipalities. All the expenses will be collected by the fees from the customers, citizens, and companies. Even more important that what we do with the waste is the question how we prevent the generation of waste and developing the circular economy. We have accepted the circular economy roadmap in where we are looking technical cycles, smart services, and uh, industrial side streams. Being green is not only decreasing emissions, pollution, or looking at how we are consuming consume in our daily life. So the Green Reality Network is a business driving coalition of regional enterprises, municipalities, and academia. It has almost 50 members that also pay an annual fee. The main activities of the network are to provide a discussion uh, arena for the companies and public bodies, joint marketing, knowledge sharing, and organizing research and development projects. Big emphasis in uh, networks activities is given to enable investments to renewable energy, electrification, and other technologies. Many times this means that city acts as the first reference customer helps with funding or project preparation. Uh, so let me now, uh, now show you some examples of what uh, our companies are doing with the help of regional innovation cooperation. This urban infra revolution 3D printed building elements aimed to repl replace cement. Cement is causing some 8% of the all global gas, house gas emissions and we like to find a another way to, to produce construction materials. The raw material for the geopolymer are the side stream products and tailings of the industrial enterprises in the province. A new concrete uh, like material is made 95% by circular materials. The result is sustainable, uh, low carbon and cost efficient material that provides new aesthetic possibilities, new city architecture, and a manufacturing process that enab enables innovative constructs. Next slide, please. Uh, next example is a company called Vimao. Vimao's waste to product pilot factory that has been running some four or three years in our regional waste center. And in this pilot factory, different waste materials like plastics and construction demolition wastes are turned to composites and further to new, new products as construction materials or street tiles. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, there are many, many other kind of examples in this uh, slide and, uh, and one might be the most important uh, investment project going on is for, for the city, our industrial sized synthetic tools pilot factory. Uh, Lapanda based Chemira Chemicals Natrium Chloride factory provides hydrogen as their side stream, and then there is a local cement factory, which is a source of CO2. And, and uh, Finnish large companies uh, make up a strong industrial consortium behind this project. We are preparing for synthetic renewable gasoline producing plant that could be operating in three years time. Investment is about 80 million euros. This way CO2 is turned from fossil waste to valuable and circulating raw material. And now about this L store, which is which you can see in the in this slide. And this L store, a private company, is a startup. Uh, that is installing their brilliant power to heat plant at our port area. City acts 
as a reference customer. With their solution, we replace natural gas in heat generation with renewable electricity and benefit from cheaper electricity price, prices in the market. And next slide, please. Yes. And United Paper Mill uh, Caucasus Forest Industry Plant is also a privately owned a huge uh, paper company. The latest innovation is to produce second generation renewable diesel from the crude toll oil, which is a residue from the forest industry. And then the next one. Uh, so uh, at the end of my presentation, we have got excellent results with junior university concept, which is a joint effort of the university, the city and several companies. In junior university, students uh, from preschool to high school attend uh, sustainability education at La Peranta schools. The topics are climate and energy, waste management and circular economy, clean water business models. As an example, as part of their school program, all eight grades calculate the climate footprint of their homes, analyze the results and take actions towards a sustainable lifestyle. I bet it uh, can help their parents here in this issue too. We think this concept of citizen activation is something other cities and also in Russia should look at. We have solutions in our hand. Let's work together and let's start now. Thank you. Many thanks, uh, Marku, for these, uh, these uh, insightful remarks. Uh, especially, I mean, these, uh, these uh, targets that you've, uh, uh, you've put uh, uh, on the table regarding uh, household waste and, and its separation, uh, this uh, circular economy roadmap uh, as well. Uh, rather ambitious, uh, ambitious targets and, and happy, to, uh, happy to discuss that those also more in detail. Um, and also the fact that, uh, that you use uh, clearly new innovations uh, as uh, solutions to enable uh, these, uh, the, the development of, of circular economy uh, in, in, in La Peranta. Um, also, what, uh, what um, I, I uh, took remark of, that you have a number of um, industrial scale uh, solutions and applications which are uh, actually operational in real life uh, and, and you have uh, concrete experience of, of running these, uh, these uh, applications and projects. So, many thanks, many thanks for these, uh, these insights. The next uh, speaker uh, on our agenda will be Mrs. Uh, Johanna Rusanen um, from, uh, from uh, Lahti. Um, Rusanen, uh, she, she has a long experience in, in waste management that extends over, uh, over the years. She has worked in, in several waste management companies in Finland. Uh, and currently she is the uh, managing director of the uh, Salpa Kierto uh, waste management company. Um, Rusanen has led operational and expert organization in, in, in this field. In addition, she has gained experience on waste management and recycling activities while working on several large companies in Finland, including uh, NCC and, and Lassilan Tikanoja, for instance. Um, so, Johanna, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yes, I changed a little bit my topic. I thought that I could uh, tell something about our company uh, and uh, what we are doing with uh, other companies in our site, uh, Lahti. Uh, you can start my presentation. Yes, and the next slide. Thank you. Yes, 
Uh, if I told you something about our company at the, uh, the beginning, uh, so we are the municipal waste management company and we are owned by uh, 10 municipalities at the moment. We are founded in uh, 1993, so we are almost 30 years old company. Uh, the the uh, region that we are handling and uh, the customers, we have uh, at the moment, something like uh, 200,000 uh, uh, residents in our area and a lot of uh, summer residents also. The properties that we are, uh, 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 don't change the slide yet, please. Thank you. Um, we have, uh, in our area, we have uh, 47,000 properties, uh, the permanent uh, residual dental use, and uh, we have also summer uh, cottages or holiday homes uh, over 20,000. 20, uh, the companies that we are serving also is uh, something like uh, 13,000. Uh, in our company, we have uh, person uh, employees, uh, 50 at the moment, and we use a lot of contractor stuff also, like transportation and machine works. Uh, our turnover is uh, something like 18 to 19 million euros per a year. Uh, we have also two other companies. Uh, the one is uh, totally us. Oh, we own that uh, whole company, Salpama LDD, and it's focused uh, to uh, handle and receive the soil and rocks and snow. And then we have this other company with Lahti Aqua. Uh, we own that from 40% um, of that uh, company. It's uh, Lapio, and it's uh, uh, dealing with uh, bio waste and uh, sewage sludge. And on the right, you can see our uh, area and the uh, communities uh, which are owned uh, our company. Uh, uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, we are invested uh, over 40 million uh, during the years to this uh, waste management system. Uh, we have uh, invested a lot of prevention of environmental damages like soil, um, uh, water and air. And of course, we have a, a promotion of circular economy uh, very uh, much. And uh, the health and safety is also really important to us. So we have invested to that also. Uh, uh, on the right, you can see how this Kuyala um, uh, Waste Center looked like 30 years ago. And uh, below that uh, photo uh, is uh, uh, last year's photo. And you can see that we have developed the waste management system a lot. Uh, at the moment, we, uh, we utilize uh, almost 100% uh, from the waste uh, what we receive. Next slide. Here you can um, <clears throat> see the company's task. Uh, in the EU, we have this uh, regulation that the municipalities are responsible for collecting and processing waste, which is uh, um, uh, produced by households. Um, and uh, all the, our owner municipalities has uh, transferred this responsible uh, to us. So we do those tasks. Uh, we receive waste, pre-process all the waste that we receive, uh, we utilization of waste, and we tendering, do the, all the tendering process. Uh, if we use uh, um, uh, transportation, handling, and treatment, what we use, we do those all the tendering processes. Then we provide information uh, to the waste management and plan and develop this system in our area. Uh, in our area, transportation of waste is primarily arranged by the property owners, so everybody can order the emptying the bins wherever they want. But some money, municipalities has changed uh, transfer is responsible to us, so we do that and we collect and emptying the bins from the household. Here on the right, you see the the picture of how we should act uh, when we do the waste management. So we should uh, prevent first, uh, it, that's the most important thing that we should prevent that we don't generate waste. If, if we can do that, we should reuse um, materials. And if that's not possible, we have to recycle all the material. And if that's not possible, we can use it to energy. And if it's, that's not uh, possible, then, then we can 
uh, landfill the waste. You can change the uh, slide. Thank you. Here is a, a picture of how we, uh, where we get our money, incomes, and where our, ma our money goes. So uh, we don't get any money from the municipalities or uh, governments. So all the uh, income is come from the customers. So mainly our incomes comes from the scale. Uh, when the customer comes to our uh, waste center, we uh, wake the uh, trucks and uh, charge handling fee and a reception charge. And what's the price is the handling fee depends on what uh, waste uh, the customers is bringing. And reception charge is uh, like 16 euro per truck at the moment. Uh, then we, when we do the uh, collection from the household, we charge uh, customers a waste handling fee and transportation cost. Then we have these uh, small uh, waste uh, reception station, uh, which are used by households and small companies. There we charge also waste uh, like uh, mixed waste and energy waste. Then we have uh, this household specific municipal waste charge uh, from the permanent um, residents. It's 32.5 euro per year, and uh, summer houses we charge 20.5 euro per year. And this uh, money we use, uh, for example, uh, uh, these uh, waste reception station. There is a lot of waste that we um, uh, receive uh, for free, so so those costs we. Uh, use this money. Uh, then we also uh, sell some uh, waste like SRF and uh, metal and uh, wood, so we get money from that also. Where our money goes, uh, of course, we have to handle this waste. Uh, we buy a lot of uh, different handling uh, 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 things from the other companies like incinerations and uh, then we have a, a landfill aftercare here in Finland so we have to um, handle the landfill uh, like 30, 30 years after we have we have ended the use of those landfills. We have also waste tax it's a 70 euro per ton at the moment and of course the maintaining all the services in our area of this network guiding which is um, uh, our task from the law and this all the counseling and administration we have to uh, also uh, pay those. Uh. We can uh, see the process where where our, uh, our turnover and operating expenses but uh, we can change the slide to those factors governing operations if you I don't see the next slide but uh, maybe maybe everyone else is seeing that. But uh, our, our, um, uh, uh, all, there is a lot of laws and regulation uh, which we have to uh, comply. There is a lot of EU directives, Finnish Waste Act and Waste uh, Decrees, Government uh, Decrees, National Waste Plan, Environmental Authorities. So we have uh, environmental permits in every uh, station that we have. Then we have tax authorities and uh, Atome Waste Board, which is a regional man uh, waste management authority uh, and owner of municipalities uh, gives us some orders and, and uh, guidelines that we have to, have to comply. Uh, you can change the next slide. Uh, there is a, on the right side of this uh, slide, there is a, this recycling rate that we have to, have to, to try to uh, follow. So uh, 2035 we should uh, have a 65% recycling rate already. So we have a lot of things to do. Uh, the next slide you can see our, our uh, situation at the moment. Uh, we landfilled 1% uh, of the waste that we receive. 56% uh, we uh, deliver to uh, energy use and 43% goes to material recovery. You can change the slides. Uh, if I tell something about our waste management services, what we are uh, uh, serving to our customers. 
we have um, uh, this Kujala waste center at the moment in Lahti. It's um, our main place. Then we have seven waste reception stations, which are used uh, these uh, households and small companies who use uh, small vehicles. We have two special collection points for hazardous waste. Uh, those are those uh, uh, small containers that um, are located in the car station. Then we have uh, all the all the farm masses in our area collect the medicines from the households and we organize all the transportation and handling of those medicines. Then we have these mobile collection points uh, for the scrap metal and hazardous waste and electrical equipment uh, in our area, in all the municipalities uh, twice a year. We have scrap metal collection points, uh, which are open 24 seven. And uh, then we collaborate with the recycling center in uh, three different uh, municipalities. You can change the slides. Uh, change slides, please. Yes. That one also you can change. And next one. And next. Thank you. Here you can see how we how our man, uh, waste management system is handled in the households. So every household has to have a mixed waste and energy waste in our area. And if you have three to nine uh, households in your property, you have to have a mixed waste, energy waste and paper. Uh, but if you have more than 10 households, you have to have this mixed waste, energy waste, paper, metal, glass, cardboard and bio waste. But uh, the plastic is uh, at the moment voluntary, so you ha don't have to have it. Uh, not yet, but it will change in the future. So bio waste uh, we handle in uh, Lapio, uh, which is in our area uh, Kujala. And uh, energy waste and mixed waste we handle by ourselves. We have a separation plant and crushing plant where we produce uh, SRF. And uh, these other uh, like carbon, glass, metal, plastic and paper, those uh, goes with, um, with uh, these terminals, which are producers responsibility. Next sl slide, thank you. Uh, in our area, the waste collection is mainly con uh, contract based. So every household can, uh, can order the emptying the bin wherever they want. Some municipalities have uh, um, uh, decided that the collection is made by us. So uh, we do the emptying the bins uh, from all the households which are in those areas, uh, which you can see below here. Sysmä, Kärköllä, Orimattila, Heinola are those places where we do the, uh, do the collection. You can change the slide. Here you can see the Kujala Waste Center. Uh, we have, uh, here is uh, our own, uh, own uh, uh, functions, but we have also uh, other companies in this area uh, who, who is uh, uh, receiving waste or doing something all, all other um, products in our area. We have here, uh, for example, Star Paper Recycling Finland. They uh, receive roofing felt and they deliver it to the uh, asphalt uh, um, stations where the asphalt companies use it to, to um, repla replace pitum, for example. And then we have here uh, Labio, we, uh, which is our company with uh, Lahti Aqua. Uh, there goes all our uh, bio waste. Then we have uh, Kasum, which use this uh, gas what the Labio producers and they uh, make uh, uh, deliver it to the, for example, uh, trans transport uh, fuels. Uh, we have here a separation plant where we, for example, handle uh, energy waste at the moment. We take uh, all the plastic uh, off and we deliver it to the uh, recycling. Then we have a crushing plant where we 
where we uh, handle at the moment wood and uh, energy waste also. And then we have a liquid waste treatment uh, plant also where we handle all the liquid waste. And uh, we have also here a landfill. You can change the next slide. Here you can see all the uh, um, this uh, process, what we are doing in uh, our main place, Kujala Waste Center in Lahti. As I said, we collaborate uh, uh, with a lot of uh, different kind of companies. Some of those are in our area. As I said, our paper recycling and NCC industry, they have uh, as that plant in our area. Then we have this Kasum and Labio, and uh, we also uh, deliver all the a uh, lot of materials to other companies who, for example, metal, uh, glass, uh, um, carton, plastic. Uh, as the last presentation was this Vimao, we, we deliver to Vimao also a lot of uh, waste. Then we have this our own company Salpa Mine here, and we deliver to them uh, all the uh, uh, soil and uh, rocks that we, we, and concrete, what we receive. You can change the slide. Here, my last slide is this, uh, this producers and importance um, responsibility. In, in here, Finland, we cooperate with, uh, with the producers and importance importers uh, because they have a responsible for packaging electric equipment batteries and tires and papers so they are we can receive these um, waste uh, but they they um, they responsible is to transport and uh, handle the waste that we have collected so so this is uh, how we act in finland with these uh, these uh, these wastes so this is uh, shortly what I had to uh, had my presentation. So thank you for your interest. Many thanks, uh, Johanna, for these uh, these insights uh, on this topic, and and really uh, to give uh, give uh, concrete examples of the let's say income and and cost structure uh, of uh, running such operations in Finland. Uh, also, the, the points which you made on, on the legislative side and jurisdiction on waste management, uh, not only in Finland, but altogether in, uh, in, in the EU, uh, most, most uh, highly appreciated insights. Um, your presentation also uh, shed light on the industrial uh, aspects uh, of, of circular economy um, with these, uh, these examples that you made. Um, they bring to my mind, for instance, the example of, uh, of Nokian tires uh, from here in northwest Russia and, and their investments in, uh, in uh, re recycling of used, uh, used tires. Um, so there are similarities, uh, similar trends that, uh, that are, uh, can be observed, but also there are differences if you look at the, the regulation side. Uh, there's some uh, major differences, for instance, on the uh, structure of, of how, how the, the regional uh, waste uh, operators are, are um, uh, operating and, and from, from whom they get, uh, in the end, uh, the, the, their incomes. So many thanks, uh, Johanna, for these remarks. Um, our next uh, speaker uh, is Mrs. Milla Bruno, uh, also from, from uh, Lahti, um, executive, executive Director for the European Green Capital 2021. Uh, Mrs. Bruno uh, has, been, has an extensive work experience on uh, various management positions and before working in Lahti, she worked as an executive producer in Finnish TV. Uh, an entertainment company, Yellow Film TV. She's also a municipal politician and a member of the Lahti City Council. So, Milla, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Just making sure that you can hear me. We can hear you very well. Thank you. Uh, 
I want to thank you, first of all, for inviting me to be part of this seminar. It's very, very exciting to be joining everybody and all these experts today on this, on this webinar. As said, I am working as a project leader for the Lahti European Green Capital Initiative that is happening in Lahti this year. Next slide, please. Can you change the slide, please? Uh, we often uh, get asked, what is, the, what is the European King Capital? Next slide, please. And uh, we spend a lot of time explaining this to everybody. La so far, Lahti is the smallest and most northern European green capital. There has been 11 green capitals before Lahti, but as you can see, uh, we're very close to St. Petersburg, only two and a half hour train ride away and uh, very proud to be the smallest and also the Northern European Green Capital at the moment. Uh, this material is uh, available for you, everybody. So there's some links to videos that you can also watch, but we're not gonna be risking the technical, technical things today. So you can watch those videos on your time. So uh, the European Green Capital, as well as the European Green Leaf uh, competition that Lappenranta has won uh, this year as well, we heard the excellent presentation from Lappenranta before, is a competition that annually is um, organized by the European Commission. It takes very, very uh, ambitious uh, work that you have to prove that your city has done over the past decades. Also, what are your initiatives at the moment? And especially what are your initiatives in the future going forward fighting climate change and uh, sustainable city planning? In the right side of this slide, you can see the theme indicators that we were judged by the European Commission when we applied in 2019, which was actually the third time that we applied, and it took us three times to win it. Please, next slide. Uh, as I said, we are the 12th European Green Capital before. You can see that there's a lot of European capitals before us that were also capitals of, of these nations. But we always want to explain to everybody that most of Europeans live in cities exactly like Lahti or even Lappeenranta, so middle-sized cities and smaller cities. And it's very important that we can show the world that smaller and middle-sized cities are fighting climate change in their territories in a very uh, effective way, and also to make sure that everything that we create in these cities that are forerunners can be implemented to cities that are the same size as, as, as Lahti, for instance, with 120,000 inhabitants, but also to be scaled in bigger cities as well. Next year, the, the Green Capital Year is going to be going to Grenoble in France, and then 2020. 23 is going to be somewhere else in Europe that is going to be actually decided in Lahti on the second week of September. Next slide, please. How we actually became the European Green Capital is always a long story. Also, when you get, if you want this material, that you can find a video on our YouTube channel. But if we go to the next slide, I'll show you just an example of the story. I am not going to go through the whole slide, but the, the main point of becoming a green capital means is that you need to start early. You need to be a forerunner and you need to start early. And for Lahti, like many other cities in Finland and also in Europe, it all actually started uh, with the realization that after the Second World War, when Lahti started to really grow very rapidly, because we had to in order to survive. Uh, for instance, we got three times as, more, uh, as much inhabitants in Lahti after the war. We started growing very fast. And also that means that the city started to be very industrial. So the, city, uh, the story of Lahti becoming a modern and urban environmental city is actually a story of transforming from a very industrial city to an urban city that is still dependent on industry players, but also now knows how to do it sustainably. We already started to work in the beginning of 90s, actually already before in the 70s, when we started realizing that the lake surrounding the city, the Lake Vesijärvi, was highly polluted. It was very... Uh, uh, 
it was the most polluted lake in Finland and we uh, it opened our eyes. So we started to take care of our lake in the in the end of 80s and beginning of 90s and that was sort of the story how it started, how the road to be in a European green capital started. Also as we just heard from from Mrs. Rusan and the excellent planning of a very ambitious planning of our waste management system already started in the 1990s. And Mrs. Rusan just showed us the excellent work that she's doing with her team and, and her, her uh, partners here in the Lahti area. Also, this is a political uh, situation, of, of course. I'm sure there's a lot of politicians who are, who are eager to hear how did we get this done also politically. Already in 2009, Lahti decided with the politicians that were in charge at that point, that in our city strategy, we already set very ambitious goals of cutting our CO2 emissions. Our production-based CO2 emissions were decided that we're going to cut those by 50% by uh, going towards 2025 compared to the 1990 level. This was made by the politician first city in Finland, first bigger city in Finland to actually in our city strategy to have these ambitious goals. Today in 2021, when we are the European Green Capital, Lahti has now cut its CO2 emissions by 70% already. And the biggest change for that, of course, is the fact that we stopped using coal in our energy uh, production and district heating production in 2019. And today, all of our uh, energy is produced and district heating is produced emission free. So now we have a roadmap of being carbon neutral by 2025. Next slide, please. To become a European Green Capital, you need to show that you have been doing excellent work in many different areas. In this one slide, you can see the, the, all of it, but if we go to the next slide, there's more infographics that are more visible to everybody. You can see, uh, for instance, the, the utilization of municipal waste that Mrs. Rusanen just talked about. So basically 1% of our waste goes to landfill at the moment. District heating production is totally emission free with the uh, use of waste and with the new bio plant that started operating last year. And with these uh, actions, for instance, we have cut our CO2 emissions, as you can see from the top left corner by 70% today. If we go to the next slide, I can show you a couple of uh, uh, pictures of just showing that our work is never done. Not one city, not one municipality, not one country is ever finished with this work. So the next uh, stage that we need to actually very take good care of is our urban mobility plan how we're going to make sure that traffic that is now actually causing the most of our CO2 emissions is going to be moving slowly towards a more uh, sustainable uh, mode, which means that we need to, of course, increase the use of public transportation, make sure that we have uh, access for bicycles and pedestrians and also vehicle sharing or shared mobility in, in general. Not to mention that we also make, need to make sure that private cars are still available in the city and people are also able to use biocas, able to charge their electric vehicles. Also with legislation, making sure that owning a sustainable private car to, in the future is also feasible for everybody. So that it, it, we need to give initiatives for people to actually change their cars to more sustainable choices. So the next big question that we need to uh, solve is uh, the mobility and also construction, because construction is very important. And uh, in infra, uh, infra constructions and everything, we need to make sure that we actually uh, do it as carbon neutral as possible. Next slide, please. If we go to the next slide after this, I can tell you about the four main themes that we have set for the Green Capital Year. We are basing everything that we're doing, the program, very ambitiously on three, these four themes, which are uh, carbon neutral life, citizen participation, circular economy, economy and nature and water. And uh, we are also basing all of our project funding or any initiatives that we start on this year based on these four main themes. Next slide, please. 
these are some of the initiatives that the city itself is making this year. I, I'm not going to go through all of them, but going back to my previous slide about the uh, urban mobility, we're starting a, a fleet of 17 electric buses this summer, which is compared to the, uh, which is when you measure it to the, uh, the inhabitants, it's the biggest electric bus fleet in Finland at the moment. We're also uh, starting a development center for low carbon uh, construction as part of our uh, part of our year, and also making sure that citizens have a very that citizens have many ways to be part of this planning, part of showing what they have done, and also making sure that the citizens understand the necessity of these actions better and also understand how they have already participated in making uh, Lahti the European Green Capital. Also, we are uh, starting a very ambitious plan uh, this year that will uh, hopefully take time about 10 years to uh, investigate and make a, a, a very ambitious uh, program with the local universities to study the nature, uh, the health benefits benefits of nature to, uh, to, to, to the citizens of Lahti. Often we find that people and citizens who would actually benefit from the, the health benefits of the nature socially or uh, physically or psychologically the most uh, don't have access to nature even though it's in their backyard. They just don't have the means or the ways to understand the benefits that nature has to offer. So this is very very important as well that we cover sort of all, all bases when we when we plan our program for the year. Next slide, please. We are uh, planning the year also in three, three objectives, which basically means a local level, national level and international level. Of course, it's very important that the local residents feel like this is worthy of their taxpayers' money. So it's very important that the, money, uh, the people who live in Lahti have a way to participate and also understand more what this, what this actually is more about. In the middle there is the national level is because we, we, don't, we don't see this only as a year for Lahti. This is of course a year for the whole of Finland. First of all, this is a super year because Lappeenranta is also a green leaf capital this year. So which means that we want to make sure that this is, this is a year when all the other great innovations and great achievements that have been done in other municipalities in Finland get a place to show it to the world. We can share best practices and we can also sort of give a platform for, for Finland to also show its, its pioneering work. And also the fact that this is a very international project for the city of Lahti. The city of Lahti has never had such an important international project that they can benefit from. So it's very important that we also show it to the world that Lahti has solutions that can be shared with everybody. We want to make sure that people learn more about the innovations that we do. But also we want to make sure that Lahti is seen as a... Uh, uh, Worthy of, worthy of town to invest in when it comes to private companies and uh, let's say cooperation between different stakeholders in the future. Next slide, slide please. As I said, we have a, a way to go to carbon neutrality by 2025, which is a very ambitious plan. We know that it's only four years ahead of us, but this means that we're gonna put ourselves uh, sort of 10 years ahead of the, the um, 10 years ahead of the uh, uh, target for Finland and also 25 years ahead of for the target for EU, which means that we're going to be cutting our CO2 emissions by 80% and compensating the rest of the 20, 20%. Next slide, please. We are partnering up with this, uh, a, a very many different stakeholders to this year, which is one of, one of the main sort of responsibility for myself also in this project. It's very important that we, we work together with the, with the universities, we work with the municipalities that are surrounding us. It's very important that we work with the government. Ministry of Environment, Environment is very involved, also financing our, our year. And it's also very important that we work with the private sector. It's, it's, we want to make sure that the sort of the private companies that are working in Lahti area and also co private companies that are thinking about coming to Lahti in the future see the benefits of actually having their businesses in Lahti. 
And this is something that we can already now find uh, useful for the for the businesses that are thinking about Lahti, because it is very uh, very sustainable for a city uh, business to actually have its home place in Lahti, because we are already uh, giving them infrastructure that is very very uh, sustainable, which is important for these uh, businesses that need to also report their own sustainability actions. Next slide, please. We are funding a lot of projects this year. So all of the money that is pro uh, uh, geared towards our ca green capital year from the city, from the government, from these private companies, from EU, is uh, then making sure that uh, a, a very good amount of that money is also sort of invested it further in the area. If we go to the next slide, you can see that we are uh, a funding, funding uh, sort of a funding arm for different kind of uh, communities and businesses and research institutions through our project funding. If you go to the next slide, we have already now within our three first project grants now funded 830,000 euros towards over 50 different projects that could vary from anything between finding uh, ways of filtering microplastics from water with the local um, uh, water management company or anything to giving 400 euros of money to a local kindergarten that will not wants to teach their children about carbon sinks by planting trees in the forest nearby. So many different kinds of projects, also projects that are culture or art or uh, uh, also sort of a, we need to make sure that we tar uh, our target groups, different target groups of the municipality uh, and city of Lahti are co covered with this project funding. Next slide, please. And uh, as I said, it's very important that everybody finds their own way to be a part of this year. And if you go to the next slide, of course, uh, the global pandemic has uh, done a little bit of a extra twist on our is on our planning but the, the, as i said before the year is made together with different kinds of stakeholders just a few to mention in this in this diagram and but it's very important that we invite different stakeholders to 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 plan and execute their own initiatives in lahti this year and also give them a permission sort of to do it under our umbrella we don't want to be in charge of everything ourselves, rather giving, giving an, uh, a place or a voice or a, uh, a theme that we can all benefit from. And also then making sure that these different stakeholders, col collaboration partners, use their own, pro uh, own, pre own pre peer groups to take out the same message sort of for further in their own networks. Next slide, please. As I said, private cooperation partners are very important. Here's a few to mention. A couple of more are also uh, coming in. We have met with 100 different uh, private companies during the last year, making sure that not one private company who operates in Finland is not aware of our, our green capital year. And that has also been a very good way of sort of promoting, promoting the city to private companies as well. Next slide, please. Uh, we have found many ways for inhabitants, uh, sports clubs or uh, culture clubs or uh, municipalities or different kinds of organizations and uh, NGOs, sort of third sector to participate and giving them also sort of mutual messages that we can share in our daily, daily operations. If we go to the next slide, I think we're going to get to the last part of my presentation which is the event calendar for the year, which is, of course, very fragile at the moment because everything has to be done virtually. But of course, we've been lucky enough to be able to plan the year knowing that we have a global pandemic in our hands. So if you go to the next slide, you'll see, you'll see a uh, sort of a, just a diagram to show you that most of the things that we're doing in the first half of the year are, of course, done virtually. But then at the moment, it seems like after the summer, we're also able to be uh, organizing physical international meetings as well in Lahti. And I'm hoping to see everybody uh, come into our very, very interesting international event calendar for the year. 
Next slide, I think I have a glimpse of what the... Okay, right now we're doing the virtual events. Of course, this, this also shows you that doing virtual things, it is very important that everybody gets to join. So this is, of course, giving us more outreach. We can reach more people and everything is more open. So in a way, it's very effective also to doing things virtually, not having everybody uh, fly into different uh, uh, events. Just the first... Uh, a small example of this. The earlier green capitals have had their opening ceremonies, of course, physically in their cities, which means that they have had around 250 people in a closed VIB sort of session for the, for the, for the opening ceremonies. We did our opening ceremonies in the middle of January virtually. It was a 45-minute uh, virtual opening uh, online that we had uh, close to 2,000 people joining in. And then for 12, I mean, 14 days, we had it still available for people to watch on YouTube, which means that overall we got 6,500 people watching our opening ceremonies compared to the 250 VIP persons that used to be in these opening ceremonies before. So, of course, we need to take sort of the silver lining from the pandemic also in our, in our, adva in our advantage and use it to make sure that everybody can reach our uh, um, events more easy. Going to the next slide, I can show you that there is an, this European Dialogue for Sustainable Cities, which is an initiative that we started every month, the first Wednesday at 3 p.m. Uh, EE time, EET time, you can join our virtual dialogue, uh, European Dialogue series where we present the former green capitals every month and we talk about one theme indicator from the sort of the uh, project that you have to fill in when you when you apply for the green capital. We have had so far three three uh, sessions already and you can go to Latte City YouTube and you can find the uh, find these episodes there for everybody to watch if you want but also please welcome and join us every every month for each of these sessions if you want. It's a one hour long session every month. Going back going to the next slide which I promise is my last slide, just a glimpse of our international events for this year, which I'm, of course, inviting you all to, all to join. Of course, everything is still COVID-affected, <laughs> so everything is still under um, uh, constant um, uh, turmoil. We need to change our plans almost every day. But at the moment, it looks like that starting from September, we're also going to be able to uh, host events here in Lahti, which you are all, of course, more than welcome to. And you can find all our events from our website, which is greenlahti.fi, and uh, we're updating the events uh, there every day. So I warmly welcome you to Lahti to join us so we can show you, show you what we are doing here in Lahti. And uh, I think the last slide was basically my contacts. So if this uh, material is going to be uh, uh, shared with everybody, feel free to contact me and uh, my team. My team, anytime uh, uh, you, you feel like you would want to know more. Thank you for the opportunity to talk today. Thanks, Milla, uh, for these uh, insightful remarks. Uh, and especially the fact that um, you highlighted the role of uh, middle-sized and, and uh, even smaller cities uh, on the fight against climate change. Um, this is really a challenge that, that we all need to, need to uh, recognize and, and act uh, in, that, uh, in, in that regard. Um, also, the fact that, that you mentioned uh, the role of uh, uh, water bodies, uh, rivers, lakes, I mean, this is, uh, this is the topic that, uh, that is also uh, current here in Northwest Russia, uh, not only, but also, also wider in, in Russia. Um, so glad that you, you raised that topic up in the discussion. Um, also the fact that um, I mean, to proceed in, in into the direction of circular economy, you need to have political will. And, and this, is, uh, this is a key ingredient uh, in order to, to, to take the steps required uh, to really go in the concrete actions. And uh, as uh, also President Putin yesterday mentioned in, in his speech, I mean, this is clearly the objective um, on the Russian side uh, that, that uh, going towards uh, a, a circular economic model uh, 
which is of course good news. Um, also the fact that uh, this, uh, this requires transparency on the local level. Uh, whether we are talking about uh, educational ap approaches or different uh, uh, public uh, campaigns, bringing, bringing more people uh, to the topic and, and being transparent about uh, the actions that we take is also a key uh, ingredient of, of the um, uh, move towards circular economy. Um, also, certainly uh, the fact that we are uh, having this session also in a virtual, virtual format, um, as you mentioned, Milla, is a good example that uh, there are some elements which might, might remain in our work also after uh, this uh, pandemic has, has, um, has gone. Really, we need to use the, the best uh, available options, uh, whether it's distant mode uh, meetings or, or conferences, which we can use uh, already today. We have the technical solutions in place. But without further ado, I would like to introduce our uh, next uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Jarko Levanen. Uh, Levanen is um, an assistant professor responsible for the master's program in, in circular economy at the LUT Lahti campus. Uh, LUT is the, is the lab around the University of Technology. Um, so his uh, research focuses especially on new social, socio-ecological models and sustainability management in the areas of circular economy and climate change mitigation. He is currently working on a research project on sustainable textile systems, co-creating resource-wise businesses for Finland in global textile networks. This is funded by the uh, Academy of Finland. And actually, I believe that Maxim, you also know this project very well. So, Jarko, please go ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, great to be part of this very important event. We could start my uh, slide. So now, please. Okay, we can take the previous, the first slide with the title. Yes, good. Uh, so my name is Jarkko Levenen and uh, I come from LUT University, uh, where we do research on, on many topics that relate to circular economy in, in different ways. And today I would like to talk about uh, two promising research threads in, in circular economy. You could take the next slide, please. And yet another Okay, thank you. When we talk about uh, circular economy, uh, as many of you know, one way of, of understanding circular economy is seeing it as a system that uh, consists of, of two parts. Uh, one part is a circulation of, of uh, so-called technical materials that are non-biodegradable and other part is, is circulation of such materials that are biodegradable. And I would like to provide you an example of, of both of these circles. Textiles uh, represent this biodegradable part of the circular economy and, and metals represent these uh, technical materials. And there are some, some differences in, in the organizing of, of their circulation. Uh, at Lut University, we focus also on other, other aspects, uh, for example, in plastics, recycling, uh, uh, transportation systems, energy systems, and so forth. But I think that this, this two could be uh, uh, provide some ideas for, for us when we today talk about circular economy. Uh, 
both textiles and metals are areas where circular practices are very urgently needed. Both have significant sustainability implications that we uh, try to, must try to uh, uh, solve. Uh, both areas also uh, have a huge business potential for, for companies to, to operate. And there is also a challenge and, and opportunity in both areas, uh, which, is, which is interesting from the research perspective. And it is that advancement of circular economy in these two areas requires system level changes. Uh, and I will provide you two points regarding these, these system level changes. We could take the next slide, please. So let us begin with, with the example of, of textiles. Their current situation is that uh, sales of, of different textile products has increased uh, quite heavily during the past few decades. And at the same time, uh, average using time of those products has significantly uh, decreased. So this, when we talk about circular economy today, I think this, this development that is taking place in textile sector is, is actually something quite opposite uh, than, than development of, of circular economy. We could take the next the next slide. This uh, development happens with a very high price, both societally and and from the environmental perspective. Uh, textile production takes a large share of freshwater uh, use in in we if we look at the situation globally. It also produces. Uh, very much uh, CO2 emissions and uh, lots of uh, different uh, microplastics that end up in the oceans also originate in, in textiles production. Uh, and cotton growing also takes uh, lots of, of global uh, pesticide usage. But in addition to these uh, environmental sustainability impacts, this industry is also connected to uh, numerous problems in, in social sustainability. And this uh, example of, of textiles is, is insightful from the perspective of, of uh, circular economy, because, because when we think about a textile system, it automatically means that we must think about global value chains. And when we think about global value chains, uh, we come into the situation for companies uh, uh, takes, are, are connected in, in uh, new ways. And that's, that's, that creates uh, lots of different uh, complexities in, into the setting and, and that, that provides uh, uh, new challenges, but also new new opportunities. We have an ongoing uh, uh, research project. Uh, already mentioned this this uh, Phoenix, which is uh, uh, supported by by the Academy of Finland, and in that project we have uh, tried to in a way create a overall perspective of of what's happening in this, this textile sector and what, what we can do better and where, where we should focus. We can look at the situation from, from the perspective of, of this kind of uh, multi-level approach where we think about uh, developments taking place in, in micro level, meso level and macro level. And we can see that these this, uh, developments taking place at this, these three levels are in many ways uh, connected to each other. And when we think about improvements, for example, in, in a certain part of this system, it, it typically uh, also creates uh, consequences in other parts of the system. And that's, that's very important to think about when we uh, 
consider, for example, business opportunities in, in the circular economy of, of uh, textiles. We could take the next slide, please. So what, what needs to be changed in, in this system? Uh, even though the system is very complex, as I just uh, tried to uh, illustrate, uh, it's still uh, uh, this, these main development points can be uh, reduced in, in the few, few ones. And those are uh, uh, heavily uh, increased uh, recycling opportunities, uh, removal of, of this uh, 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 polluting uh, uh, aspects from, from the textiles, such as these microplastics. And in addition to these uh, environmentally focused activities, uh, perhaps most important thing is that we must uh, uh, affect the ways how people use, use their textiles. We need to create new business models that support uh, uh, more used times per clothes, and and that's that's perhaps the most most challenging part in in this this exercise. We could take the next slide. But the good good thing is that uh, the change is already happening, and there are lots of different uh, activities taking place in the development of, of uh, circular textile systems. Could we take the next slide, please? OK, here are some uh, examples of, of the activities that are currently happening, especially in, in Finland. But these similar types of, of, of uh, business activities also can be found from, from uh, different parts of the world. Good thing when we think about Finnish, Finland, Finnish context is, is that uh, uh, in addition to startups that typically have uh, such of uh, flexibility to, to engage in these, these new business developments, uh, uh, large companies are also taking very important roles as, as part of this systemic transitions. For example, as innovators of of new new ways of producing fibers, for example, from from uh, wood or or uh, uh, textile waste. Uh, here are some uh, companies mentioned. Uh, I only picked uh, three from each each, uh, each category, but the most interesting categories are uh, making of new products from textile waste textiles. Uh, providing uh, clothing as a service, different types of, of business models that uh, 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 support so-called slow fashion as, as compared to this fast fashion paradigm that I be began with. Then there are uh, these uh, uh, new ways of, of producing these textile fibers from different types of waste streams and also these uh, completely new wood-based uh, fibers. And in addition, there are also new, in a way, more modern versions of, of, of reuse and, and secondhand uh, uh, business models. So these are examples that how, how the change is, is taking place at the moment. Uh, we could take the next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so from the research perspective, we have uh, aimed to go in a way deeper to understand this, this change and, and its sustainability implications in more details. And uh, we have, for example, uh, modeled uh, uh, these types of, of, in a way, uh, archetypes of, of different circular economy business models in, in textiles and then calculated their, their uh, global warming potential impacts uh, with, with uh, life cycle assessment modeling tools. And uh, this has been 
very, very interesting uh, exercise. Uh, we could take the next slide where we have the results of, of, of this uh, calculation. Here we can see that uh, this uh, uh, reduce and reuse based uh, uh, scenarios reduce meaning uh, basically extended uh, 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 life for, for the textiles and reuse meaning this, this uh, for example, reselling options of, of used clothes. They have the biggest uh, potential to reduce global warming potential, climate change uh, in, in, in practice. Uh, whereas these more modern uh, ways of, of creating, for example, fibers from, from the uh, textile waste, they have somewhat uh, similar uh, global warming potential as is in the, in the base scenario where, where these uh, used clothes are, are, are uh, uh, incinerated as, as a energy at the stage of their end, end of life. Uh, this doesn't need to be uh, pessimistic uh, in, in the sense that we would say that these new models are uh, as polluting as, as the old ones, but instead we must now remember that this, this uh, calculation was about global warming potential, CO2 emissions. This, this doesn't take uh, into account uh, achievements in, in, in the uh, material efficiency, which all of these new models improve. But at the same time, it's uh, still important to remember that uh, in addition to development of these innovative uh, recycling uh, methodologies, we must also consider that what's good in, in, in those uh, uh, recycling options that already are in use. And therefore, my first uh, system level point is that uh, when we think about development of circular economy, we should accept that increased recycling is, is not enough. These circular economy business models should proactively uh, stimulate behavioral changes among the customers so that they would uh, think about uh, uh, how, how long I should use, for example, clothes, uh, what types of, of uh, uh, choices I, I should make that would support uh, longer uh, 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 using times for clothes and, and, and so forth. So focusing on quality uh, instead of quantity and, and these, these types of issues. Okay, we could then go forward and take the next slide, please. So let's go to the my my next uh, example, which was uh, metals, and I'm now focusing especially on on metals that are becoming uh, most uh, rare in in the near future. Uh, the situation is such that uh, some some of of our metals are becoming uh, very rare already in in the near future, and this poses numerous. Uh, uh, risks for different types of, of industries and, and, and so societies at, at large. And when we think about uh, metals and, and, and circular economy in, in, in that context, we must think about where, where these metals come, come from uh, in the first place. And here is, is a map uh, illustrating that. And from, from this map, we can uh, say that that in this context the situation is similar as as was in in the textiles. Here also uh, value chains are global by nature, and we must take that into account when we think about uh, circular economy in the context of of uh, uh, metals. It brings numerous issues in into agenda. For example, for for business development. Uh, we could take the next slide, please. Uh, 
And one other thing that I would like to mention here is, is that uh, recycling of metals is typically considered from, from the perspective of uh, material efficiency, which is of course the main main point in, in, in this activity. But at the same time, we must also think about energy savings that originate in, in uh, 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 recycling of metals. Uh, mining is very energy in intensive activity and therefore when we can uh, uh, make products from, from uh, recycled metals, uh, it, it also leads to uh, huge energy savings globally and this is not insignificant uh, matter. Let's take the next slide please. So when we look at uh, this, this uh, metals example in, in the context of, of circular economy, uh, it is obvious that we must increase uh, recovery of valuable metals from different types of secondary sources. It means, for example, uh, metals that are covered from, from uh, elect electronic waste materials, but also from other uh, more challenging uh, sources, such, such as uh, ashes that uh, uh, are produced when, when uh, household waste are incinerated in, in, in energy production. And that's what we are also doing at, at LUT at the moment. We just have initiated a research platform that focuses especially on, on, on uh, metals recovery from these uh, different uh, secondary sources. Uh, here is one illustration that, that how recycling can take place in the context of uh, lion battery recycling. And, and there the point is that there are similar innovate cascading processes that can be found from, from, from the uh, context of biodegradable materials, that there are different options uh, to use, uh, for example, components as, as, as such, but and then go uh, forward into more, more challenging uh, uh, ways of, of, of recycling. And for example, at LUT, we are developing different uh, hydrometallurgical processes uh, for the purpose of, of more ambitious uh, metals recycling in the future. We could take the next slide. And again, from, from the perspective of research, we have uh, tried to uh, better understand uh, uh, the role of, of, of metals recycling in, in, in societal development so from, from the societal perspective. Here is one example of, of such uh, research efforts uh, where we compared uh, uh, batteries uh, recycling in, in Chile and in Finland, and especially from the perspective of, of society, societal arrangements that may, may or may not support uh, this type of recycling. And here focus was especially on, on uh, batteries of mo different mobile devices, such as uh, cell phones. Uh, we conducted a qualitative research uh, uh, that uh, studied uh, this institutional contexts of, of, of uh, this uh, recycling activities and, and here by institutional environment, I mean uh, not only laws and regulations, but also in a way more established ways of doing things, social norms, uh, practices and routines related, for example, batteries recycling. And this study focused on, on two companies, one in, in Finland and one in Chile, which can be considered as, as a foreigners in their own industries. And we wanted to understand that how uh, these institutional factors, features of, of institutional arrangements affect uh, the business models of these companies. We could take the next slide. 
two more minutes, uh, and then we'll move on to the discussion part uh, uh, of this uh, this session. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I could only say that uh, uh, this this uh, uh, research also revealed different types of institutional features that affect to to business models in different ways. We can take the next slide, please. Again, we can go to the next one. I will go to the findings. Yes. So here we can see that differences, for example, in standards, uh, take back systems, organizing uh, regulations, for example, re related to extended producer responsibility, uh, and then more informal uh, issues such as social awareness of, of recycling, et, et, et cetera, they all have implications on business models of, of companies. Therefore, successfully coordinated ways of knowledge exchange between diverse actors is critically important. Uh, we studied uh, uh, organizing of, of uh, recycling of such uh, components of this battery waste that have uh, uh, positive value, uh, uh, meaning that the materials as, as such are valuable. Then the uh, circulation of such materials uh, mainly uh, uh, adv advancing of recycling of such materials mainly relates to uh, increased awareness rising and, and things like that. But when we think about uh, recycling of such uh, battery waste that has uh, doesn't have a monetary value yet or or it, it has even negative value, then uh, different types of uh, institution, more formal institutional arrangements become even more and more important. And therefore, my next uh, system level point was that to understand how to advance circular economy most efficiently in different countries, it's very important to understand how institutions function in details. We could take the next slide. To sum up uh, my, my presentation, uh, when we think about development of, of circular economy business models, it's very important to uh, remember to consider not only technological aspects, but also how to affect uh, consumer behavior and, and how institutional environments affect that business model and, and such a business approach that is under development. Thank you very much. Many thanks, Jarko, uh, for this. Uh, uh, insightful remarks from the side of uh, side of research and, and science. Uh, this is this is something that we need to remember uh, always when we are considering new policies, new strategies, that we really take the the um, latest information from the side of the science and and incorporate it in in our policy making. This is this is essential. Uh, also. Um, Really good that that you um, you highlighted the, the uh, increasingly um, uh, inc increasing recycling opportunities uh, in this regard. Uh, but we also need need to create uh, business models which uh, support uh, longer usage for, for various various products. Uh, the the customer behavior here, I think, is the is the point uh, which which we need to need to underline. Um, so we need to need to create uh, synergies, which really really um, foster that sort of uh, long-term customer behavior, uh, and and in a way the the uh, tradition to, to use and reuse those products that that we that we are uh, uh, buying. So um, now I believe we have a few more minutes to uh, to have a few questions. And maybe maybe um, the interactive interactive part of this this discussion, um, Maxim. Maybe uh, you would like to say a few words uh, here at this point. 
Yeah, Mr. Hirvanen, thank you very much for for uh, for this for this discussion and also for moderating this discussion. I, I have I think we have a nice panel, and I would like to to thank my colleagues from Lalapete project of Southeast Finland about uh, for this discussion. And and also it's uh, the one thing I really miss that we can't do this forum offline because I saw so many nice events that will be done in Lahti that is very relevant for St. Petersburg especially like the Green Design Week or Green Finances. I hope that in September we will be able to, to join these events in offline format, but uh, we will be more than happy to, to discuss this in advance. I was really delighted about the presentation from Yarko about the, uh, the events on, about the metal and about the textile, and especially about the textile because two weeks ago, uh, with, this, uh, with the partnership of uh, Lala Peter project, we had uh, supported the, the key fashion contest in, in St. Petersburg. And it was the first nomination probably in Russia that was dedicated to circular fashion. And it was so successful that we have more than 30 applications in this nomination. And, and this, the fashion show that was really important because we, we would like to show and we would like to raise the awareness about this problem and to show the best examples. And uh, we are really looking forward uh, to see this experience that is available in Finland because for the winners of our competition, we have a prize, a study trip to Laperant and Lahti. And the, I had already two speakers today that I we would like to visit. To, to visit the loot and to, to see the economical things and also the, to see the scientific things. And we would like to visit the Lachte, the capital also of, uh, of design. And now we have all the speakers online and maybe we, can, we would like to have a discussions together. Uh, maybe a question that, uh, that um, after these uh, presentations and, and remarks, um, I would like to, uh, like, like to raise up, I mean, Clearly, we uh, in Finland, we have an ambitious uh, program for circular economy. I believe uh, Citra uh, um, estimated that by, by 2030, uh, the value added uh, of circular economy in Finland will be some, some 3 billion euros. That's uh, 270, 280 uh, billion rubles. So we are talking about huge uh, economical uh, issues also. So maybe this is, uh, this is uh, especially to, to Milla and, and Markku. Um, I mean, how, how do you see the next steps in this regard? If, if this is the, the state of mind at the moment, if we go down the road, let's say five years, what will be the target at that point? Yes, thank you. If I may start, uh, I think this is uh, very a crucial question that it's not only because the environment we are doing this work, we are going to create a lot of new jobs and this uh, uh, electrify, uh, green electrifying is uh, changing the world and it will change the whole, every kind of industries. So these old fashioned jobs will, will disappear and we will create uh, new jobs and and at the same time, we do have the medicine for climate anxiety and we give hope for young people. And, and this is the message what we hope that Russia will also take seriously and, and we are willing to cooperate with our Russian neighbors. And there is a lot of new technology, a lot of uh, new ways to do things uh, and, and uh, to save the climate. So. I think in five years' time, we will have much better uh, future uh, uh, view to the future. And, and uh, for example, our local politicians are very keen and motivated to do this kind of work together with our LUT University and all these green uh, companies, what we are doing have here. Thank you. Thank you, Marku. Maybe Milla, if you would like to have a word on, on this topic also. Yeah. Uh, microphone. We need a sound for Milla, yes.
small technical problems, but uh, that's... Uh, uh, Miller, uh, your microphone is off. Connections. Um, well, if, um, if not, then our experts are, are working on the, on the matter at the moment. If uh, if not, then I'm afraid we need to need to move forward. Many thanks, Mila. Anyways, um, another point which was uh, which was uh, discussed uh, to some extent is certainly the the uh, educational approach uh, to circular economy, which is of course uh, uh, an, an important and, and uh, crucial, I would say, in order to succeed at the end of the day. Um, so maybe, maybe to, to Jarko and, and uh, Johanna, uh, if you would like to, like to comment uh, this perspective, like how can we really uh, give incentives for the next generations to come uh, to apply uh, sustainable uh, methods, sustainable uh, policies, and, and really starting from, from the grassroots level, really take, this, uh, take the concrete steps. So if you have uh, some remarks on, on this topic, I would be glad to hear your insights. I could uh, share some thoughts. Uh, uh, at, at the LUT, we started the master's program in circular economy two years ago, and it has attracted really much applications from all over the world, and, and uh, numbers have been raising year by year. So at, at least it seems quite evident that there is lots of, of interest toward these uh, sustainability driven uh, uh, motivations among, among youth in, in, in different parts of the world. And, and it's very important that we can in a way respond uh, constructively to this, this demand and, and provide uh, such education that, that really is, is needed to support uh, uh, for example, business transformations in different sectors. And there it is very important that we take a, a broad view on, on what's, what's needed. Uh, when we think about advancement of circular economy, it, it must take place simultaneously in different areas of, of societies. And therefore also it's very important that uh, 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 study programs that that support it it are, are constructed so that they are not too in a way too specific that they also provide uh, understanding of this how how systems change uh, uh, for example in in certain sectors and that's that's what we are trying to do to do in in LUT of course you need to have a key uh, competencies in 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 the, in in some some uh, areas but at the same time, what is more and more needed is, is this kind of a bigger picture understanding of, of for example, a certain industry. Excellent. Many thanks. If we still have uh, some minutes, uh, I would like to give, uh, give the mic to Johanna, if, uh, if you are still online. I think Johanna has quite a busy uh, schedule. She, okay. she, she well, has to leave. I yeah. guess then we will uh, we will wrap up wrap yeah. up the discussion. Um, I mean, many thanks uh, to our to our participants uh, online, uh, and and certainly to our speakers uh, in in Finland. Um, many thanks to uh, um, the boiling point uh, here in Saint Petersburg, uh, to organizers of this discussion. Circular economy is uh, it's a topic that, uh, that remains uh, crucial, not only for us, but, but also to our partners uh, globally. Um, we have already, uh, as it was so shown, we have uh, suitable, uh, good, uh, sustainable solutions to solve these questions to a large degree. A uh, lot remains to be uh, resolved in the, in the future. Um, transparency, uh, education, for instance, is, is something that, that needs to be taken on board uh, in these discussions, that we need to have that grassroots uh, approach uh, to solving these challenges. Also, what is, what is needed, uh, what came up also in the discussions, uh, is political will. Uh, 
that's one of the key ingredients in order to really start going to the right, right, right direction. But in, in addition to political will, we need concrete actions. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll close with that. Maxim, please, if you have uh, still some remarks. Thank you, Mr. Hirvanian, and thank you for moderating our session. It was a great pleasure to work together, and uh, we thank Consul General of Finland for supporting our event. I think we had a nice, very nice and fruitful discussion today, and it's only, I think it's only the start. Uh, the forum is, we're doing this forum for the first time, but I'm, I'm quite sure we will continue. And I think today it's kind of a remarkable time. It was saying about the political will, and yesterday we had a message from our uh, president to the Legislative Assembly, and all of the key words about the circular economy and about the climate change was there. So now we have the political ground, and I think we have all the conditions to go forward, and I hope that together with our partners from, from Finland and from all over the world, we will be able to do that. And you know that uh, today it's a world uh, uh, very important date for the world and also we have a uh, leaders climate forum today at, at starting at three o'clock where the president Putin, the, uh, the president Biden, uh, the president of European Commission will get it together and I think our event is, uh, is a really good start for the day. Uh, I would like to thank all of our partners, I would like to thank the Boiling Point, I would like to thank the uh, Lalapita project, I would like to thank the South of East Finland program for supporting our event. Thank you for your attention and uh, looking forward to see uh, you in the next session and next year on the Baltic Circular Forum in 2022. Thank you. Many thanks.